so I think without further ado, I'd like to give our main man, John Major Jenkins. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be uh, uh, given the status of Godfather. <laughs> I'm not going to be any mafia hits tonight. <laughs> that, uh, you know, they can get kind of jealous. Um, no, but Jim, thank you so much. That was, uh, that was very nice. And Jim has been a great ally for many, many years in this uh, long, strange trip that I've been on. And it was about 13 and a half years ago that I was at the Institute of Maya Studies for the first time in 1997. And when that invitation, invitation came in, I was just bowled over. Uh, it was before Maya Cosmogenesis 2012 came out and my research was just gelling right there at that moment. And, and I, I felt that that was just a great affirmation of, of the, uh, the work I was really doing. I appreciate being here again. Thank you so much uh, to Pat and Freddy and the Institute of Maya Studies for inviting me once again. Uh, there is new research to share, and it has to do with this uh, Tortuguero Monument 6, which is the only classic period uh, inscription that has the 2012 date on it. And so I'm going to run through some things sort of introductory at first, uh, just to for those who are not familiar with my work or my background and and how this is all going to connect up, I'm going to run through some of that stuff first. And uh, then we'll get into the Tortuguero Monument 6. Um, this really is becoming the focus of a lot of scholarly attention around the 2012 topic and discussion. In fact, just a few days ago in Lima, Peru, there was a very prestigious conference. The Oxford Archaeoastronomy Conference happened and it was the ninth annual one, and many scholars talking about many different topics, many different sessions, but they had a 2012 session that was headed up by John B. Carlson and Mark Van Stone, and, and they had speakers like uh, Barbara McLeod, a uh, great famous epigrapher and, and Maya scholar, uh, Michael Grove, uh, who is a PhD uh, Maya scholar teaching out in California, and he is doing amazing work on reconstructing Maya astronomy. And uh, Carl Calloway and, and others were speaking in that session. So um, there was some brief mention of Tortuguero Monument 6. Uh, and the fact that the 13 dates on this monument um, contain astronomical patterns is only now really coming to the forefront. And uh, what I'm going to present here is really the research that I was able to present at the Society for American Archaeology conference last April. So uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. Who am I? Um, I am an independent researcher, I confess. Uh, in my recent book, The 2012 Story, I went into explaining how a lot of times in many fields of study, it's actually independent outsiders who make the breakthroughs. And I've traveled and worked among the Highland Maya since the mid-1980s, so my work has really been driven by my passion for the Maya people and the Maya culture. And I've written many books and articles, and with a special focus on this pre-classic site of Izapa. And the reason why I became interested in Izapa was because in the early 1990s, I was interested in the 2012 question. And a logical question to ask would, would be, well, where was this 2012 long count calendar invented? And I found in the academic literature, uh, Michael Coe uh, had said that he believed that uh, uh, Izapa was clearly responsible uh, for the formulation of the long count calendar. So that sent me to Izapa. Um, and I'm also an advisory uh, member of the Maya Conservancy, which is a new nonprofit that is organizing a lot of uh, events and uh, work at the sites. And uh, I'm also the originator of the 2012 alignment theory, which is basically what I'm going to get into a little bit here and hopefully clarify uh, any misconceptions. And, uh, and I've, I've had this research uh, resource, alignment2012.com, online for, uh, for many, many years. <coughs> and uh, these are some of my early books uh, going up to 2002, uh, as Jim went into. and. Uh, and so it's been a continuing, ongoing investigation. And the focus of my work, uh, I guess you could break it into two parts. And uh, one is sort of the nuts and bolts reconstruction, you know, trying to figure out what the ancient Maya were thinking about 
in their cosmology, with, and especially with their 2012 uh, period ending. And uh, that ne necessarily involves looking at the astronomy and related traditions like the mythology. And, uh, but I've also been interested in the Maya spiritual teachings. You know, and so I've been a voice for talking about the Maya spiritual teachings uh, from the vantage point of honoring these these traditions. You know, to the vantage point of assuming that these spiritual teachings uh, have meaning and are real and can speak to uh, people everywhere, um, because as Jim said, they belong to this perennial philosophy, this uh, profound. Um, sort of like the essential basis that lies at the root of all of the world's great religious traditions. Um, and I think that's been one of the reasons why my work is sort of controversial, because I try to language even the astronomy. I, I try to language the whole picture. I try to uh, explain the Maya worldview uh, without slicing it up into little pieces and just looking at one piece at a time, because the Maya themselves had a holistic worldview. So it's, it's a bit of a challenge. It's uh, it's not as easy as just talking about one thing one piece at a time, but because the Maya have this holistic worldview, I try to find a language that can sort of uh, speak accurately about how they themselves uh, perceive the world. Um, but you know, we can we can sort of set aside the spiritual teachings thing uh, because it brings in a whole lot of other sort of uh, discussion and so on. And, and primarily in this presentation, I'm going to focus on sort of the nuts and bolts reconstruction, which does involve the uh, the astronomy. Uh, astronomy, mythology, symbolism, prophecy, spirituality, these are all things that one encounters as one is uh, exploring Maya thought and culture and cosmology. So uh, in a nutshell, in my book Maya Cosmogenesis 2012, which came out in 1998, I presented this reconstruction, um, the galactic alignment theory. And it's basically that in the years around 2012, um, the sun on the solstice, because the cycle ending in 2012 falls on a solstice, the sun on the solstice will be lining up with the bright band of the Milky Way. Specifically, that part of the Milky Way that contains what is called the dark rift, the dark rift in the Milky Way. That's simply um, a, a visually perceivable feature that lies, that runs along the Milky Way uh, that's caused by interstellar dust. You can go out there and see it in midsummer. And it was a feature of great interest to the Maya. The modern Maya call it the Shabal Bay. So these are all within the realm of visually perceived uh, celestial features. And it's caused by an astronomical phenomenon called the precession of the equinoxes. So for many, many, many hundreds of years, the position of the December solstice sun has been shifting slowly until it comes into alignment with the uh, with the Milky Way. And this does factually occur in 2012, the fact of astronomy. And <clears throat> the one thing that I contributed to this whole discussion really involves showing how this alignment image or concept is embedded into the core Maya institutions, which includes the ball game, the creation myth, and kingmaking rites. So also, my whole work up to this time, working uh, with this book, was based upon my research into Izapa, because I didn't know about the Tortuguero monument at that time. You know, very few people did. You know, it only came out into widespread knowledge in 2006. So I was actually looking, working at the site in the context of the formulation of the calendar, and I found alignments at the site of Izapa that all confirmed this with the ball court, and we'll get into that. So, so this is what I put on the table um, 13 years ago in this book, and. Uh, the Tortuguero Monument 6 is, is really a fascinating document that actually confirms uh, this research that I was doing. 